Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and this week I'm making a pair of pants for one of my SID guys. I've always loved wet look vinyl, but it can be a little difficult to sew with because the high gloss finish tends to stick to things because it's so slick. One way to combat this is using a Teflon foot for your sewing machine. I have one, but it doesn't fit as flawlessly as I'd like. The good news is, it's possible to use a regular sewing machine foot for this. You can see the metal sticks pretty badly, but that's easy to beat. Just put a piece of masking tape or painter's tape over the bottom of the foot and it'll slide perfectly. So after I get all my pieces ready and I cut off the extra tape on my machine's foot, I start with the front of the pants. The first thing to do is put one of the pocket lining pieces against the matching front piece with right sides together. I'll sew around the curve of the pocket to join the two pieces together, then clip the curve so it will turn smoothly when I fold the pocket lining to the inside. The next thing to do is top stitch along this seam to make sure the pocket lining stays inside the pocket. But here's another place where the texture of the vinyl works against me. You can see it won't slide, because the vinyl keeps sticking to the throat plate of my machine. To get past this roadblock, I use a piece of tearaway stabilizer. I put the stabilizer underneath the piece I'm trying to sew, which lets it slide around easy. I pin the edges of the fabric to the stabilizer to keep the material from moving. Then, after I top stitch the pocket, I pull off the stabilizer. This particular kind of stabilizer melts in water, so if I wash these pants later, any remaining bits of fiber will disappear. When the pocket lining is folded so the edge of it lines up with the side of the pants, that completes the top corner of the pants. But there's something else we need to put here too. This little square of material will become the watch pocket. I fold over the top edge and sew it down to create a hem on the top of the pocket. Since I'm using vinyl, I don't need to worry about finishing any raw edges. But if you're using material like denim, you'll want to finish the edges of the pieces with a zigzag stitch so that they won't fray. I fold in the sides of the watch pocket and then put it against the regular pocket to see where I want to put it. Make sure you leave enough room at the top and the side for the rest of the pants to be sewn together. Then I sew the watch pocket onto the pocket lining, going down one side, across the bottom, and up the other side. I backstitch at the beginning and end to make sure the pocket won't come loose later. It's really tiny, but it's a functional pocket. Pretty neat. With the watch pocket done, I can now fold the pocket lining closed and sew the bottom shut which will hold the side exactly where I want it. To keep the material from shifting, I pin the lining in place anyway. I hate using pins on vinyl because it pokes holes in the material that can't be repaired, but if you put the pins through the very edges, the holes will be hidden within the seam allowance. I sew the other front piece and pocket the same way, just without the watch pocket, since I only need one of those.
two halves of the front all assembled. Now for the tricky part, sewing the fly. There are two pieces for the fly, one that goes on the top and one that goes underneath. I'm starting with the top piece, which will be sewn to the front of the side with the watch pocket, with right sides together. It's important to note that it won't be sewn all the way down. Instead, you'll want to stop where the curve of the crotch begins to flare out. This is how far down the fly will open, but we need the extra length of these flaps to finish the inside. Next, we'll prepare to add the zipper. The zipper should be attached first to the other side of the pants front, with right sides together. Make sure you leave space at the top for the waistband to be attached. The metal stoppers should be about a quarter of an inch down. When this is sewn to the front, it'll flip to the inside and underneath of the fly. The bottom flap will go on top of this, which creates the under flap of the fly needed for good closure. When sewing a zipper, you absolutely can use the standard zigzag foot most machines come with, but it can make it harder to get the needle close to the zipper's teeth. I'll be using an adjustable zipper foot. Then it's just a matter of sewing on the zipper. You'll want to check and make sure the zipper closes well. If the stitches are too close, it might be hard to zip shut. This looks good, so I put on the flap that goes on the underneath of the fly and sew it down. Like with the fly on the other side, you want to stop sewing at the point where the crotch begins to curve out. Before we can attach the zipper to the other side and finish the front, you'll want to top stitch along the edge of the top fly. Sewing along this very front edge helps keep the flap from pulling out whenever the doll sits down. Attaching the zipper to this side is easy. It just gets sewn onto the flap of the fly. The edge of the zipper should be aligned with the edge of the top flap. See? Easy. Check to make sure the zipper is even from side to side, then sew it down and check to be sure it still zips closed. Now you'll see that the flaps hang loose and are long on the inside, but they line up together. This is where we finish the fly by sewing across this bottom edge. Of course, this zipper is longer than what I need, so I'll need to shorten it too. I sew the bottom edge of the fly by hand so that I can easily shorten the zipper. I just knot the thread at the edge and sew straight across the bottom but I loop the thread around the teeth of the zipper several times by doing four or five stitches going around it. This creates what we call a bar tack, which prevents the zipper from coming apart and keeps the slide from coming off the bottom of the zipper too. Then I cut off the extra zipper length. Last of all for the front of the pants, I line up the curve of the crotch seam underneath the fly and sew the two front pieces together at this point. It's a really short seam, only about an inch but the end result is a nicely finished front with a fully functional zipper fly.
Next, we'll get started on the back. This particular version of this pattern has the back all in one piece, instead of having a yoked back like what you usually see on jeans. That makes it easier to assemble when working with tricky fabrics like this, or with patterns. The first thing to do on the back is put on the pockets. Start your back pockets by turning down the top edge and sewing it in place to create a hem. Check the pockets against each other to make sure the hem is the same size on both. Then lay your pocket against your back piece and decide your placement. To ensure I get the pocket exactly where I want it, I use a white gel pen to draw along the top edge of the pocket. This ink is water soluble, so I can wipe it off later. But now, instead of fighting with the alignment of the pockets, trying to get them even, I can just line up the bigger back pieces and use a ruler to draw a matching line on the other piece. Perfect. Pockets are another place you'll need to pin things down. Turn in the edges of the pocket and pin them down. Then lay the pocket flat against the back piece. You can now remove the pins one at a time while holding the pocket against the back. When you put the pin back in, it connects the pocket to the back of the pants, but it prevents the edges from coming unfolded. It's finicky work, but it gives nice, uniform results. Normally, you would just iron the pocket to keep these folds in place, but with vinyl, that's not really an option. I double-check measurements to make sure my pockets are in the right place, then I sew them down. These are just like attaching the watch pocket. Start at the top of one side, back stitch, sew down the side, across the bottom, and back up the other side, once again back stitching at the end of the seam. Isn't that a great pocket? Sew both pockets the same way. Then lay the two back pieces right sides together and close the curved center back seam, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Once that seam is closed, put the front and back of the pants with right sides together and pin down the outside edge of the legs. We'll backstitch at the bottom, sew all the way up the side, and backstitch again at the top. This closes the side of the pants. Do this on both sides. Before we can close the inseam, we have to hem the cuff of the pant legs. To ensure the cuff is even, it's a good idea to put a pin in the center of the crotch. This means that when you pull the fabric of the pant legs out straight, the cuff will be straight too. Then you can fold the fabric to the inside to create a hem. Since vinyl often stretches a little, one side of the pant leg might be longer than the other. That's okay. Just fold the extra length to the inside and hem it appropriately. Then you can pin the inseam closed on that side and repeat the cuffing process on the other side the same way.
You'll sew the inseam shut in one go, starting and backstitching at the end of one leg, sewing up to the crotch, then turning and going down the other leg. You'll want to backstitch there too, giving you a durable inseam. At this point, the only thing left is attaching the waistband and belt loops. No matter what kind of fabric you're using, you'll want to try the pants on your doll at this point, and make adjustments to the way the waist fits. There are multiple places you can tighten the waist. You can make the pockets deeper by moving the top of the pocket toward the side, or you can take the fabric in at the side where the front and back are joined together, or you can take it in at the center back. My material had stretched just a little, so I decided to take in the back. This is a tiny amount, just moving the seam in about a quarter of an inch. But that gives me a total of a half inch less space around the waist, which makes a huge difference in doll scale. I've pinned where I want the new seam to go, but I mark it with my gel pin to make sure I see it clearly. I'll cut off the extra after I sew this new seam. This is a fast and easy adjustment that really helps the way these pants fit on the doll. You can change the way the legs fit too, of course, by tightening the side seam or the inseam. But I don't want these pants to be too snug, or my doll won't be able to use the mobility joints in his thighs. Before I can attach the waistband, I need to finish the belt loops. I fold them into thirds, and pin them that way. Then use a twin needle to sew them. This gives me identical rows of stitches down the belt loop and it turns the thread on the underside into a tidy zigzag, which finishes the underside of the belt loops at the same time. The waistband goes on to the outside of the pants, with right sides together, lining up along the top edge. The end of the waistband should extend about a quarter of an inch past both ends of the pants waist. If it's too short, chances are the fabric of your pants has stretched and you should double check the fit, and the strength of the seams. This is why you backstitch at the ends, so the pieces won't pull apart and mess up the fit. I place each of my belt loops in between the waistband and the pants, with the right side of the belt loop against the right side of the pants. I put these on the front between the fly and pocket on either side, on the sides where the front and back go together, and one on the top of the center back seam. I check to ensure my waistband is long enough on both ends, so that I have room to finish the ends. It looks good, so then I sew the waistband and belt loops in place. This is slow and finicky since I have to make sure the pants don't get sucked under and sewn in. Then it's time to finish the waistband. That quarter of an inch extra flap at the end gets turned to the inside. Then the waistband gets folded to the inside too. The top raw edge should tuck under by about one quarter of an inch when you fold it over, leaving you with a half inch tall waistband that's neatly finished on both sides. This is kind of difficult to show, especially since the material is so dark and so shiny but it's just a rolled hem, nothing too complicated. Once it's all pinned in place, I finish the waistband by sewing down the front edge to seal it closed, then turning and sewing along the edge of the waistband where it meets the pants. This becomes top stitching on the visible part, but holds the waistband closed on the inside too.
The last step of sewing is to fold the belt loops so the raw end is tucked to the inside. You may want to trim a little extra off, but then you'll sew along the top edge of the waistband, creating top stitching, and also sewing over the folded belt loop to attach it to the top of the waistband. I like to backstitch across the belt loops for extra strength, though it isn't really necessary in doll scale. Once you get to the end, that's it. You're done with the sewing part, and the pants are ready for a closure on the waistband. I pull off the last of the stabilizer and trim the last of my threads. I mark where I want my closure to go and punch holes for snaps with the leather punch. I try my tiny anorak snaps first because I love the way these look, but they're unfortunately really difficult to work with and my pliers are a shade too big so I end up ruining the last snap that I have. At that point, I give up and use my bigger ring snaps instead. Oh well, at least the ring snaps come in black. And there we go! Finished pants. Complete with functional pockets and a zipper in the front. And I don't know about you, but now I'm tired. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.